Shall we start now? And then, uh, shall we start? Yes, 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 sure. Uh, okay, so hi everybody. Hi, Tayo. So, uh, may I have the honor to introduce my colleague, Tayo Sato. Tayo is the uh, English language teaching DLT portfolio manager for Asia. And she will be assisting us in uh, having an overview and understanding of Team Together of Primary ELT course from 10 to 11 uh, a.m. Vietnam time. And then we are moving to another section with my, uh, my colleague Quan Li for the assessment for primary for English benchmark your learners. And can you listen, Mr. Lin? Mr. Lin is the academic manager of uh, Old Vic May Language Center uh, that adopts uh, Pearson team together, uh, staff, and also in a reviewing a process of English benchmark for young learners. So over to you, Kayo, and I will have to call it as well as uh, approve the uh, admittance uh, of you know participants. So you don't need to just spend time accepting uh, the guests. Thanks, Tony. Uh, hello, everyone. It's nice to meet you uh, virtually. As Tony has introduced, uh, my name is Kayo. Uh, I'm based in Tokyo. Uh, but I look after our Asia English language uh, learning courseware for the, for the whole Asia region. Uh, and I've had the greatest opportunity to, to visit Vietnam a number of times, and I hope to, to be back soon. Uh, so today we're going to do a quick overview of um, Team Together. And I'm going to share my screen, uh, and hopefully you'll be able to see everything all right. Okay. I'll be sharing audio later as well, but if, well, if you don't hear the audio, just give me a shout uh, and let me know about that a little bit later. So no worries. Uh, so let me just put this on presentation mode. Just not, there it goes. Uh, so we're talking today about um, Team Together, and I'm quite excited uh, because I do think this is a course that works really well um, and really well in, in Vietnam as well. When the, the course was being developed, uh, the product manager for Team Together, who, who looks after the development of the course, uh, looped us in uh, during the early stages because she really felt that it was something and a course that would work really well uh, for, for Vietnam. So we're very excited uh, that he decided to use it. Um, and we'll spend the first hour uh, looking through Team Together. I know some of you who have reviewed it are already familiar with it. But for those teachers um, who haven't really looked at it yet um, and who will be teaching it um, very soon, I hope this uh, overview will be helpful for you. So we'll do an uh, introduction to Team Together. So uh, this is a, a very new primary course um, which develops language skills uh, alongside 21st century skills. And it's really uh, designed to appeal to institutions uh, and teachers like yourselves who are looking for kind of that tried uh, and tested methodology um, and very robust kind of academic uh, background. So as you see uh, on the screen there, we do have seven levels of Team Together. Uh, and it's a rather, we would say, intensive uh, primary course. It does look a little bit at exam preparation, test preparation, uh, as well take a, a little bit deeper look at that. Uh, in the next few slides as well. Um, Team Together is aimed for learners aged 6 to 12, uh, studying about 5 to 8 hours of English per week, but that's uh, flexible and, and we're able to kind of uh, be flexible in the curriculum planning for Team Together as well. Uh, when developing Team Together, the team did have private primary schools, private language schools uh, in mind, especially schools that are, are looking for evidence of progress uh, and are hoping to get uh, their students ready for it now. Uh, and we also hope, of course, that Team Together uh, appeals to you. Uh, we, we believe that it appeals to different types of teachers, um, particularly those with uh, broad and demanding schedules, uh, but who want a course uh, that is tried and tested, as I mentioned, and has step-by-step uh, instructions which uh, make it quite easy to teach as well. So the next slide is just kind of an overview of the, the components that we have available for teachers and then the next slide is, is 
for a student. Uh, there are quite a few uh, components. I hope that uh, means that uh, you feel that you're well supported in your teaching. Uh, we will look at some of the digital components that are available to you as teachers because I know with so many uh, resources available, it could be a bit overwhelming. So I will also do uh, a walkthrough of our Pearson English portal so that you know where you can find uh, these resources uh, and, have, and how you can access them quite easily. Uh, and then for students, it's a little bit simpler. <laughs> so students have uh, access to uh, their print components, so the student book, uh, activity book, vocabulary booster, and if you want to add additional uh, test practice, there is a test booklet as well. Uh, and then they have access to uh, the digital side of things where they have an ebook, uh, extra practice and game, uh, and uh, homework if you want to assign homework online. So now let's uh, take a look inside. Oh, sorry, before we do that, uh, there is a correlation chart as well. And I'll share this presentation with you uh, after so that you can, can look at this if, if you need to be looking at correlations between uh, the levels of Team Together, uh, RTSC scale, PEFR, and then Cambridge uh, PT Young Learners, which is uh, actually. Um, now called uh, Pearson English International Certificate for Young Learners, if you are interested yeah. in your students taking that exam, uh, and also our benchmark exam. And as, uh, as uh, Tony mentioned, uh, the session after this one will be hosted by uh, Guan Li, and he'll take you through uh, the benchmark mm -hmm. assessment. Right, so let's take a, a little deeper dive into uh, Team Together and uh, look at what makes Team Together so great and hopefully means that uh, your students will succeed uh, in their learning. So the first thing um, you'll see is uh, some of these six features that we think make uh, Team Together unique. Uh, and we'll go through these one by one so you have a little bit more information. Um, but basically it's a 21st century skill. Uh, hopefully this is one of the reasons why you decided to go with uh, team together, but it develops these 21st century skills alongside the language skills, um, really helping your students prepare for uh, today's world. Um, you'll see that there are examples of problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration, all of those great C's uh, that they will learn while they are learning English. Going kind of up and around, uh, we also have stories and values. Uh, so the theory provides uh, language learning through stories. We hope this is appealing uh, to your students. Um, the interesting stories and characters uh, we think really make English language learning a bit more livelier, more interesting, hopefully, uh, and more fun. Uh, and then there is uh, the exam preparation component. Uh, another unique feature of, of Team Together uh, is also the variety of exam prep that we have. Uh, so we do have preparation for Cambridge exams as well as our PT uh, Young Learners uh, Pearson English International Certificate preparation as well. Uh, and then we have culture lessons as well. We'll take a look at these in a bit more depth uh, as well. But students are uh, encouraged to use English in kind of a more natural way uh, and practice English in authentic contexts, which is going to be important, obviously, for your students how they use English uh, in the real world. And then finally, English benchmarks, uh, which I will leave to uh, my colleague, Wanli, to talk a little bit more about uh, at the end. So um, for the 21st century skills, we also call these uh, future skills. So one of the, the key features of uh, Team Together is uh, the focus on 21st century skills. So many of the activities that you'll see uh, in Team Together are a combination of teaching English, teaching real language, uh, and the development of, of 21st century skills. Um, and what's nice about Team Together, I think, also is that these activities are clearly um, signposted throughout uh, the units. So let's see if we can kind of find these icons 
on the page. So the first one of the 21st century skills or future skills is thinking or think, critical thinking. Um, let's see if we can find it on the page. Uh, up here we have the, the light bulb here. Uh, and then we have uh, solve. So this is the problem solving uh, future skill that we're looking at. So if we can kind of look on the page for the problem solving icon. There we are. So that indicates that this activity uh, is covering problem solving. Then we have uh, the create icon, which is kind of like a paint splash. So the paint splash uh, we have here, uh, emphasizing creativity in this uh, activity. Uh, and then we have uh, this team together, which is kind of the group work collaboration uh, icon. So look for that on the page. Oftentimes it's towards the end because you know, they're using the language that they learned in the lesson uh, to do a collaborative uh, activity. And we also have uh, communicate. So communication obviously is very important uh, in terms of the future skill. Um, and here you have the, the speech bubbles to indicate uh, there is communication activity. Uh, let's see. Also on the page, I wanted to highlight uh, the project. So you see here uh, on the, the lower part of the screen that there are project lessons to promote also collaboration. Uh, so here it says uh, we're making a spider diagram uh, of an animal protection agency. So we see kind of an example there of doing a project, uh, doing a spider diagram, uh, which is quite nice, I think. Uh, and then we have uh, in level five, in level five and six, um, we have big questions that are here. So these are signposted also very clearly um, with the wow questions. So these are uh, critical thinking questions that we have uh, in the upper level, so I think it's just levels five and six, uh, where we ask uh, students things like, what is the greatest invention of all time? Why? Uh, and obviously these big questions uh, don't have kind of a yes or no answer. Uh, students come up with their own answer uh, and are encouraged to be able to kind of explain. And of course, there's no right or wrong uh, answer, but it's a good opportunity for them to think about the language that they learned uh, and, and apply it in a more uh, critical way. Right. Um, so then now into the, the stories and values, which we also mentioned are an important part uh, of uh, Team Together. And obviously, stories make uh, learning more fun, more interesting and exciting. Um, and it's a really effective way, we think, of introducing new language uh, in kind of more of a meaningful uh, and memorable way. So um, I think we'll take this opportunity to introduce some of the uh, characters that you'll be meeting throughout the team together. Uh, so there are different characters and families that appear throughout team together. So for starter level, um, it's based on uh, two families, so kind of very close by what um, learners of that age know is basically their family. Uh, and then for level one and two, um, they expand out into kind of friends, uh, and we call these the helpers team. So these are uh, students who are keen uh, on science, and they're keen on learning new things, uh, and they're also eager to help uh, their families uh, and the wider community. So you, can, you see that they're moving from their families kind of to the wider community. And then uh, in level three and four, uh, we're calling this uh, the discovery team. So this features a group of uh, kind of curious children who are keen also on science uh, and learning new things. Um, and uh, each story is built around kind of a specific uh, concept from the social and natural sciences curricula. So that makes uh, it quite interesting. And it also increases the kind of level uh, as you're moving from the lower levels up to the kind of more uh, higher level thinking ones. And then for levels five and six, uh, we have a group of uh, primary children who are running an online magazine uh, called the WOW magazine, World of Wonder. Sorry, it's a typo on the slide there. Um, uh, and so these children, uh, and these are real life children, we use photos for this, 
uh, are working on a magazine together uh, and looking at uh, scientific things and things like that. So that will also be interesting to students of that age. Um, so the, in the lower level, um, the stories are presented through animation. Uh, and we'll take a look at that as well when we look uh, at the ebook later on uh, in the session. Um, and basically, the teachers can either read the story with the children, or the children um, can have the option of listening and watching uh, the story animation on their own. So I'll show you how you can uh, do that as well. Um, and then, in, I don't know if you can see it very well, but in this uh, slide, we're looking at a story about animals um, and the value that uh, they're teaching here is that students should be kind to animals and, and take care of animals. Uh, so you can see that these stories are also uh, teaching children a sense of values as well, which is important at this, at this age. Uh, and hopefully I can play that uh, story animation for you later. Uh, and again, uh, as the series progresses, stories are, are presented more uh, kind of with photos. So you can see that on the, the right side, there's more kind of a, a real world setting. Uh, which is more appropriate uh, for the older children. So animation, moving on to kind of more of the real world approach uh, in the upper levels. Uh, and then moving on to uh, exam preparation. Uh, so Team Together prepares learners uh, for Cambridge English qualifications uh, for A1, sorry, pre-A1 uh, starters, A1 movers uh, and A2 flyers. So it provides uh, a lot of opportunities for, for your students to get acquainted with the format uh, of these external exams. So for the, the Cambridge English qualification, um, these exam types are integrated um, in the activities and there you can also see um, clearly where those uh, activities are using this icon. So it's kind of a nice feature, I think, of uh, team together is all the, all the different icons. So the, the future skills, 21st century skills, are indicated by icons. Uh, the exam preparation activities are, are also indicated by icons like this. So it's easy, it's easy to find uh, what you're looking for. Uh, and then the get ready for section at the end of uh, each of the units. So these um, uh, are both in the activity book as well as the students book. Um, and they focus specifically also on exam practice. So you see an example here um, of the practice for a one mover is there on the page. Uh, we also have um, an assessment package uh, for teachers. I'll show you where you can find uh, the assessment package, which also includes uh, exam style uh, practice for students who are preparing for these exams. We also have uh, vocabulary boosters. So uh, obviously vocabulary is a very important part of exam success. So uh, depending on obviously the needs of, of your students, you might want to focus uh, on vocabulary uh, to be able to boost uh, their success on, on exams as well. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, the Pearson English International Certificate Preparation as well. Um, that you can there uh, on the screen. Uh, so these are additional booklets that you can use uh, also to prepare uh, your students for these exams. Okay. Moving on to the culture lesson. Uh, so if you remember, this is where I just uh, described kind of being having children be able to uh, use language in kind of a more natural way. Um, we don't think that uh, learning a language is just about you know, vocabulary and grammar. Uh, we also need to kind of give them information about uh, culture, especially the cultures um, of countries where that language is, is spoken. Um, so for level one and two, um, there is a bit more of a focus on the UK and the US, but then the scope of the English language learning countries uh, slowly expand, expand with each level, um, also following on uh, what the students uh, are learning uh, in other subject areas uh, as well. So the lessons often focus on global issues, so that's bringing in kind of uh, the cultural aspect 
intuitive well, especially um, kind of in the upper levels. Uh, we're talking about things like climate change um, and the kind of content that students are exploring will expand um, alongside the children's age as well. Uh, you'll also find that there are some authentic videos uh, alongside these culture lessons. I hope to show you one of those a little bit later uh, as well. Um, and then each culture lesson also includes uh, a project. So here's one from one of the lower levels, uh, and here's one uh, from one of the, the higher levels. This is usually kind of a creative uh, and collaborative activity <laughs> and, and brings a little bit of, of fun uh, and kind of reviews the, the language, obviously. That has been taught in the lesson. So. And then on to CLIL, uh, which is the, the content and language integrated learning. Um, as I mentioned, one of my favorite things about Team Together <laughs> are these really nice icons. So for CLIL, also, um, you'll be able to find these quite easily with the nice little CLIL icons that appear uh, from here and there. Uh, so uh, learning a language. Uh, and another subject at the same time, I think it's, it's the most natural way of learning a language, not kind of separately, but within context, and especially for young learners also, since that's what they're learning uh, every day at school, uh, is the subject area. So, in Team Together, uh, multiple subjects are taught uh, in English, so that students' uh, exposure to the language uh, is increased through those uh, subject areas. Um, at the end of each of the, the stories, there's also a quill icon. Um, and these usually indicate uh, that there is a science uh, or math worksheet that can be found online. So you see a, an example of that there on the screen. Um, and after every three units in uh, the student's book, there's also a learning club section that you can see on the screen there. Um, and this consists of a language booster lesson. And then also And this part, again, I won't spend too much time on, but hopefully this is kind of a, a good segue uh, into uh, Guan Li's session, who's coming up. But uh, Team Together is very well aligned uh, to English benchmark for young learners. Um, and the reason why this is so is because of uh, the global scale of English. So uh, I won't spend too much time talking about the, the global scale of English, but the GSD uh, is really meant to help teachers measure learner progress uh, in a more kind of granular, granular way. Um, it's a very step-by-step -step, uh, approach. It uses can-do statements, which I think you're all familiar with, uh, which is the same uh, as the CEFR. It also helps you um, plan your lessons uh, better as well because all of the GSD learning objectives are uh, divided into skill areas. So as you can see on the, the top, um, the pink boxes, uh, reading, listening, speaking, writing, for example, you'll see uh, in each lesson what objectives are covered. So reading covers this, listening covers this, uh, etc. And then you can plan your lessons better that way by knowing uh, what's coming. And then if you need to focus more on listening skills, for example, or, or speaking, you can hone into those activities and focus on those uh, more so than others, for example. Um, what else about uh, English benchmark? You can see uh, the, the correlation there again, but uh, I'll leave it to one link to talk about benchmark. So you'll be wanting to, to hear more uh, about it, but it is the perfect part our team together, uh, and it works really well um, together, as you can see there uh, on the screen. So what I'm going to do now uh, is go out of PowerPoint and go into uh, the Pearson English portal so that you can see uh, how to access some of the teacher's resources that I mentioned. Uh, I also want to do a kind of quick walk through um, of a unit uh, from Team Together as well. So just bear with me as I go to the Pearson English portal. So this is the, our learning management system um, from 
Pearson, uh, you log into uh, the dashboard and you won't see this many courses. I just have almost all of the, the courses that we offer from, from Pearson. Okay, we'll skip down uh, to Team Together. So you'll see the Team Together icon uh, when you've gotten access uh, to the Pearson English portal. Uh, and then when you click on the various levels, like so, you'll see uh, the resources that are, are available. So for level one, um, we have these, like, these tiles uh, for teachers. Uh, don't worry, students don't see all of this. This is just uh, for teachers. Teachers see all of the um, resources that you have. You get more. You get more things uh, than the students do. Um, so what I'm going to do now uh, is look specifically first uh, at the ebook, so that uh, you know I can walk you through a typical unit of Team Together, and then. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the resources that are available as well. So first I thought I would show you just a, a quick look at level one, and then I will move to uh, level six. So you see the difference. Um, so I have it already open. On, oh, I thought I had it open on Hello. the page. Hello. Not. Ủa sao 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 vô được đang 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 học bình thường mà ta. Anh ấy đi Con cô nào? Ờ vẫn vô. Vẫn vô bình thường mà, vẫn nhấp vô từng link đó mà ổng có đào tới Microsoft team về chưa? You probably won't have to do a search. Microsoft team. Microsoft team. I can do a search at the top here to look for the ebook that I'm looking for. So I'm going to start with team together one. Uh and this is just uh, unit two, we can just look very quickly, I guess, at, at this page and uh, maybe the next page so that you get an idea of what uh, the level one looks like. So, uh, again, here you have the little icon at the top. Uh, so, this is a think activity to kind of activate um, students' prior knowledge. There's a, a stopwatch activity at the bottom here as well. Um, and this is meant to kind of revise vocabulary uh, and language forms from previous uh, units. Then we have, this, because this is level one, uh, a lower level activity, we have a uh, sticker activity, hopefully that makes learning vocabulary a bit more uh, motivational for children. Uh, we also have these kind of exclamation marks to highlight certain things like uh, vocabulary that might be slightly trickier. We also have uh, the chants, which are always fun. Uh, and what I wanted to show you also is that all of the audio and video is embedded in this ebook so that you can just click the. Oh, sorry, I stopped it. Yeah, maybe because but, of the connection then. Um, for, for me personally, I, you, I will download the offline versions, so it's work better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can test it first, and if the, the online isn't working so well, there is an offline version so that you can download it, uh, and you don't have to worry right. about uh, the connection. Uh, yeah, let me try the uh, video as well. Let me know if you can hear the video. Không, ông cần lấy cái link đó là ông vô à, tại vì cái link đó là nó có cần. Bây giờ có hai cái code ở phía trên, chị thấy ông, chị thấy meeting ID vậy là bắt code không? Thì cái ông nhập hai cái đó vô. Cái phía trên cái đường link đó nó có cái 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 cái, ấy phía dưới đường link đó nó có meeting ID với bắt code đó, cho ông nhập hai cái đó vô. Story animations from level one. So I wanted to show you kind of how the story looks uh, 
the, the lower levels. Um, I should also mention there are tools also on uh, the screen. So if you wanted to highlight certain things uh, or do really simple activities, you can open up the tools here uh, and do activities. Uh, I should remind you, this is the e-book. So we also have a, a, a classroom presentation tool which allows you to do things that are a bit more um, high level, but you can do very simple things uh, with this one, like uh, do like check marks and things like this very easily uh, and delete them. Uh, but I'll also show you the classroom presentation tool that we have, um, which is a bit more comprehensive. So this is uh, level one, and then I want to quickly look uh, also show you level six as well. Let me go back to the home page and go to You can see uh, immediately that the level has increased uh, for uh, level six in terms of the amount of text on the page uh, as well. But I wanted to highlight some other things, like we have the um, big questions that I mentioned, which are available in, in the higher levels that activate the, the critical thinking skills. We have all of the uh, learning objectives on the, the page here as well, so that students can understand the goals of the lesson. A uh, reminder again of the icon, we have a think icon here, so this is um, activating students' previous knowledge about subject areas and getting them to think. We also have a very nice kind of um, photo layout here, uh, introdu introducing new vocabulary through photos um, so that it helps with the, the students' uh, comprehension. And then we also have a communicative activity uh, at the bottom here, so remember again the uh, speech bubble here explaining uh, the communicative activity that we have. Uh, and then on the, the next page we have um, uh, a story and you can see here that there's grammar within this uh, story as well. So it's being, t it's being taught through uh, dialogue, taught through context. Uh, and then we have explanations and review of some of the, the grammar taught in context here. Uh, and then kind of a more traditional uh, box, grammar box on the right side so that you're able to, to teach the grammar rules uh, to your students as well and they can work through those rules uh, with the activity that follows. Um, we also have a little section in orange here with the, the new language that's been taught. Um, uh, and you can see there's that bullseye icon. So we're quickly reviewing some of the language that was taught uh, in the lesson through uh, exam uh, practice as well. Uh, and on this page, uh, we're looking, I wanted to show you very quickly also that there, in the upper levels, uh, we're introducing different types of text as well. So different text types and genres are introduced uh, in the upper <coughs> levels to get students uh, uh, get students uh, interested and also aware of the different types of, of genres that are available in reading. Um, and similar to kind of our readers, so <coughs> English readers, we have before you read activities uh, and after you read activities uh, to help with the, the students' comprehension. Um, next page is uh, vocabulary and grammar. Some nice uh, listening activities are there uh, as well to help uh, consolidate learning. But then we have, uh, yeah, I wanted to show you this page because this is one of, an example of the, the culture page. Uh, and obviously, climate change is an important topic that's been discussed uh, very <coughs> widely uh, these days, so I thought this might be a, a good one. Um, but what's nice about um, these culture pages, uh, and I mentioned slightly earlier as well, is that it also comes with uh, an authentic video uh, that helps with the, the children's learning as well, and I wanted to show you the video very quickly to get an idea um, that the upper levels are, are kind of more real world topics, whereas the lower levels are topics.
foundation is growing as the children grow uh, as well. So I'll just quickly run through the other pages as well. This is the next one is kind of English in action where they're looking at more functional language. Uh, in the lesson, uh, there is model dialogue that they can use to practice conversation. Uh, in the upper level, there's more of a focus also on, on pronunciation uh, here, which is, which is quite nice um, with the audio so that you can practice um, uh, sound discrimination uh, as well for the upper level. Uh, and then again, in the upper level, there's more of a focus on kind of the literacy um, and reading and writing practice, which is also important for exam uh, skills as well. So being able to kind of do these reading activities, and I think this is a good one um, that shows kind of uh, how it incorporates exam things as well, because in exams you see a lot of these diagrams uh, and you need to be able to understand what graphs and things mean. So this is a good example of uh, reading, looking at visual visuals and then answering questions. Uh, and this is another good example on, on the right side of the page as well. There are also some good tips that you see here. So um, in terms of how to write a report, there are good tips that are highlighted. Uh, and here, for example, is a nice tip uh, on vocabulary while you're writing any grammar while you're writing as well. Uh, and then here, as we, uh, towards the end of the, the lesson, you have kind of a review section. So the wow over to you section is a consolidation of the, the content uh, that's been taught at the unit, in the unit. Uh, and then at the end of the of this section, there's a collaborative activity, um, again, highlighting the future skills, 21st century skills in terms of collaboration. Um, and, and hopefully, we think these activities are quite engaging uh, and motivating as well. Uh, and then this page, again, is the, the exam prep. So here we see uh, uh, test, test type for A2 key uh, exams and key one preliminary for schools. Um, and they're practicing uh, the content from the unit in an exam style format. Uh, I think that was it. So yeah, that was a quick walkthrough um, of a unit from uh, level six. Uh, and then we also did a quick look at level one as well. So now I'm going to take you back to the Pierce English portal. So what we just did was look at the ebook, uh, and again, you can look at the ebook online, or you're also able to uh, download it offline as well. So if you needed offline access, you can download it ahead of time uh, when you have a good connection. So uh, what I'm going to do is click the first tile, which says Team Together Level One, and this is where all of your teacher resources are housed. Um, so when you click that tile, you'll see two tabs. One tab is the <coughs> presentation tool tab, uh, and another tab is the resources tab. Uh, what I'm going to do is do a quick run through of the presentation tool. So in case you want to use this presentation tool, you can. So you have the option of using this, or you could just use the ebook uh, if that's simpler for you. So we open up the presentation tool. Uh, you see that there are two checkboxes actually. So one for student book uh, and one for workbook. So if you only wanted to look at the student book content in the class, uh, you can tick off, take the tick off the workbook, and you'll just have uh, the student book content. If you only wanted to look at, sorry, if you only wanted to look at the workbook content. You just click uh, the workbook, and all the pages of the workbook will show. So I'm going to stick with the student book for now. Um, so we're going to look at the student book pages. If I click Teach here, what it does is it opens up uh, the student's book page. So similar to the ebook, uh, but this is a little bit more uh, comprehensive because you can do activities in more of an interactive way using the classroom presentation tool. So these, um, these uh, yellow stars show you uh, activities that are interactive. So if I click on the yellow star, it will open up uh, the activity. So the first activity, which is uh, how many family words do you know, who's got four legs, etc. Um, and 
if you open the lesson flow uh, at the bottom here, what it does is that it takes you through all of the different activities in the student book. So it's a very easy kind of lesson flow. Uh, and what's nice about this versus the ebook is that it's already zoomed kind of up. So the activity is easier to see on the screen than it is kind of on uh, just a, a, like a PDF version of the page. So there's a bit more of a zoomed, zoomed up uh, version here. And if you click through like this, you go through each of the uh, activities on the page. You can play the audio. So this is a sticker activity. Uh, and you can do other activities as well. So we'll move on to the third activity. Uh, who are family members on page 44? Again, what's nice to get is that it's zoomed up already so that you don't have to zoom into the ebook yourself. All that, all that is done for you already. Uh, and then as you move on, things like the song are also there so you can play the song. And as you can see, it also highlights uh, the, the text as you go along, which is quite nice uh, as well. This is the karaoke version that you can do as well. Uh, and then activity five. Uh, excuse me, uh, when you uh, play the video, I can't hear the sound. Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah, it's true so because, I... because of the sound part. It only uh, record the voice of the presenter, but not the audio, which, uh, but it's working fine in the dashboard. So when you play okay, the audio sorry. and video, what we did, there will be sound, but because uh, how, how the computer function, it just record one sources of the sound. So that would, you wouldn't hear, hear anything from the external sources. Yeah, I don't know if that makes that. sense to you. I have clicked on uh, play the computer audio, but sometimes it doesn't work. I've had this happen a couple of times, so sorry about that. Uh, but yes, the other video is playing. Don't so, worry. Uh, so I'll skip to the audio. Um, no thing to call it, but yes, the audio does play. And I wanted to show you also, we looked at the ebook had simple tools, uh, but the classroom presentation uh, tool actually has a bit more tools. So these are all lines that you, uh, are similar to the uh, ebook. Uh, but we also have these uh, additional tools, which are quite nice, um, for especially for primary school, I think. Um, so this one I use a lot, which is uh, Team A, Team B, especially for young learners. You put the class of two, get them to you know compete against each other, get a bit of excitement going. Uh, and you can use the scoreboard on the screen, so you don't have to use the whiteboard uh, anymore. Uh, so that's quite nice. And similar to that, there's a, a timer as well. So oftentimes you set, you know, three minutes, probably not for young learners, but for, for, for kids maybe just like 30 seconds on an activity to get them, you know, doing it very quickly and then it'll bring uh, when it's done. Uh, there's also a dictionary if you wanted to quickly look up a word with your children so that um, your children also get used to using dictionaries. Uh, and then the whiteboard, which is not available uh, on the ebook, but allows you to kind of explain things if you want to, you know, show how to, to write something or things like that. You can use the whiteboard. That's the alarm. Uh, so that could be done. And then, oops, I need to get rid of the whiteboard. Uh, and you can get rid of the, the various tools. As well. So I think these tools, especially for, for young learners, are, are quite helpful here. Um, and if you're, in, if you're in the activity and you've forgotten where you were, uh, you can also click back to the page view. So if you want to remember where you were in the student book, you can click this page view uh, and it will open up where you were in the student book. So that last activity was this one here. Uh, and you can look at it this way or you can look at it uh, through the different uh, activities up at the bottom here. So hopefully that is, is quite useful. Uh, 
So you have two options, using this presentation tool or using uh, the one, the ebook one. Oh, okay. I, I have a question to ask. Um, well, there are, yeah. some, there are some interactive activities uh, in the presentation tool, but I don't think it is available in a workbook because uh, I only see things like uh, activities, interactive activities like quizzes on a student book. But when you look onto the workbook, um, the demonstration is quite simple. Um, there's just only the audio sound and, and there's no interactive um, icons on it. Oh. Yeah, I think that might have been a, a budget constraint. So I think they spent a little bit more uh, resources on the student book okay, and yeah. weren't able to do so much with the, the workbook, unfortunately. But we also got feedback, um, especially for young learners, uh, teachers of young learners, that they want the workbook. Uh, and and there's, there's one feedback so uh, in, in terms of, uh, in term of uh, the ability to Zoom. Because when you look on to some, for example, like um, the activity number one, um, the picture is kind of tiny in, in a single slide and it is unable to zoom, zoom in. So I, I think when it's sold on some kind of smaller screen, it is hard for the student from afar to see it. Yeah, you mean like this, uh, if we go like this, it, 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 for, for, for something like, um, maybe let's say uh, the opener of the lesson, they have like a big picture and they want to zoom in a certain part of the picture um, and it is hard to. Okay, can you just go to lesson one of... Um... Um, I mean, the lesson one, the opener. Yeah, it is, uh, it is able to zoom in in a, in a story page, but, uh, but if I want to move to the single slide, um, yeah, I, I just want to zoom this picture in, oh, it yeah, is impossible to. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can't, that's one of the limitations I would say also is that you can't uh, zoom in here, you can only zoom in on the page view. Yeah. So the only, the only way you can do with this is if you have, I have a map, so I'm able to do this on a map, oh, okay. but I don't know. If but, then, but, but, but then the ratio of the screen is going to mess up. Um, so that is one of the limitations, yeah. But maybe you, maybe, you, like, um, maybe you should have some kind of um, interaction into the function, let people zoom in yeah. within, a, within a slide. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so in that case, I would recommend using the page view. Uh, if you wanted to look at a certain part of the, the page, you can zoom in this way, it might be better. Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks for the question. Um, we have limited time, so I'm gonna, uh, obviously if you have other questions, uh, please let me know, uh, but I'll move on to the resources. Uh, hopefully I can leave five minutes for questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't have questions, you can run to the bathroom while Glenn Lee comes on uh, for his session. So uh, as I mentioned, there are two tabs. So there's the presentation tool tab uh, and the resources tab. So if you uh, go to the resources tab, you'll see all of the resources available uh, for you as teachers teaching team together. So all the audio files are here. Again, if you wanted to download them ahead of time uh, for any reason, you can download the audio. Uh, and same thing with the video. If you're having connection problems or if you really just want to have the video on hand very quickly, you can download uh, all of the, the videos here uh, as well so that you have easy access to those. Uh, all of the, the tests are available here uh, as well. So we have um, the unit test uh, and uh, end of term tests and end of year tests, also um, exam prep tests, uh, and all the, the audio for the tests are here. Um, Photocopyable, so if you're doing in class activities uh, and you want to hand out um, photocopyables to do extra activities, these are available here. So, different types of activities uh, that you can do uh, vocabulary, grammar, songs, etc. Uh, so, if you have extra time, you can come here uh, and look for new activities that you can do. I also wanted to highlight the teaching with uh, videos, so the teaching with TT, teaching with Team Together. Videos are quite handy. Um, so for those 
uh, teachers who also weren't able to join today, I might uh, recommend that you introduce these videos to them because um, they're very, like, very short, like, I think two or three minutes, maybe videos, but they go through all of the things <laughs> that we went through today. So uh, there's a, like, a presentation tool uh, video so that they can look at uh, the presentation tool video. Okay, so this is like oh, uh, accounts would be provided for whoever teach the, um, the new programs so they can get access to yeah. um, this kind of thing. So uh, if you want an account, so you can create one in the PhD list dashboard and then send me both the user and the password and I will activate it with uh, the material included. Yeah, exactly. So we can provide accounts for all of your instructors. All of your instructors will have access to uh, the presentation, so the resources, uh, as well as the ebook, as well. So all of that will be available to you. Uh, since we don't have that much time left, uh, I will open it up to questions. So if you had any specific questions uh, about Team Together or about the resources. Uh, so uh, I'm more concerned about uh, uh, the assignment uh, in which we have a, a tab called class that we can create classes and then assign uh, yeah. homework to students. I think that you should mention a little bit about it so uh, the teacher would know how to assign homework to students. Yeah, good. Uh, thanks for raising that. So there is a, a way to assign uh, online practice homework to your students as well. So what you need to do first is create a class. Uh, to make sure that all your students uh, join that class. So going back to the dashboard, so remember to go back to the dashboard. Uh, there are a few tabs here, and what you need to do is click the Classes tab. So when you click the Classes tab, uh, I have a few classes already here. You do Add New Class. You click the Product, which is going to be at the end. I have too many products. Almost there. Ah, sorry. So team together. Uh, and then you uh, put a name for the class, team together four. And then uh, you'll click your institution. Uh, and then you can choose an end date for, for your class. So if your class is a year long, uh, you'll choose it for a year from now. So I chose October 6th. Uh, you can change the color if you want. Uh, and then what you need to do is invite students uh, into that class. So like in any other learning management system, you need to have students assigned to your class in order to uh, assign homework. So you can send the QR code to your students to get them uh, in the class, or you can also print instructions and give the instructions to your students as a PDF or a printout uh, as well. So if you go to your class, uh, it, right now I don't have any students in my class, so I won't be able to assign anything, but I'll show you how you can uh, assign things uh, if you have students. So you go to create new assignment. Uh, you can change the name of the assignment if you want to, put in the start date, the end date, and time. Uh, and then you can choose the activities that you want to include for homework. So here it says homework, you opened up the drop down. Uh, and then let's say you're assigning homework for unit one. If you want to assign all of the, the items for, for unit one, you can just click, select all. If you just want to assign vocabulary homework, then you can just choose the vocabulary activity. Let's say you want to do vocabulary and grammar for this homework. Uh, and then what you do then is you can change the number of times they do it. Oftentimes I just say unlimited because I think it's nice for students to be able to do activity 
take unlimited times. And then here you'll have all the students that have uh, registered for your for your course. At the moment, I don't have any left. <laughs> but I imagine that you have all your students here. So you choose all your students. You can add instructions. Please complete my class. <clears throat> and then you'll be able to assign. Again, I don't have any students, so I'm not able to assign. But that's how you're able to assign activities uh, for your class. And then once your students have started doing uh, the assignments, you'll also be able to see their performance. So if you click on the performance tab, uh, you'll see some really nice um, statistics on, you know, since we just assigned vocabulary and grammar, you'll see if your students are doing better in vocabulary or, or better in grammar, like that. Uh, so that's basically how you will set assignments for your students uh, through creating classes. So just remember this important part is that you have to create a class uh, first before you can uh, assign anything to your students. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, so if anyone have question, you can ask um, the presenter about it, or you can ask me personally. Um, I would try to explain it. Okay, one thing so uh, we have uh, let's say uh, preparation preparation no resources, but how do we uh, accommodate it into our lesson? Can you recommend us how, to, how do we? Accommodate uh, actual resources into our lesson uh, in terms of uh, test prep. Uh, so for for test prep, is if you don't have that much time, I would recommend just doing all of the activities as they're signposted posted uh, in the students book. Mm -hmm. So the students book will already kind of uh, have you know the review sections for test prep, um, and then all of the activities in the format of test prep. So I would recommend that way. If you have more time, uh, I think there are also recommendations in the teacher's book for that as well. So let me just quickly show you. I, I forgot to show you uh, whether there are tips. Top tips. So the top tips are here as well. Um, so these are uh, for the Houston English International Certificate. Um, you can have all the audio uh, available as well. Let me just let me check here. I think there are also sections in the teacher's book recommendations on where and when to teach exam prep as well, but I'll share that with you later. It's okay. under the resources. Any other questions? Okay, I think it's fine. Um, that's a good presentation anyway. Very, very comprehensive. Um, yes, there's quite a lot actually. <laughs> there's quite a lot of resources, and this uh, team together is one of the re uh, courseware that has a lot of content. Uh, um, but, 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 but so, for, for our school personally, I work. Uh, divide the course into, let's say, from level one to level five, so that the student can sit the, the flight exam. But then the, the level six would be for a teenager. Do you think it, uh, it is appropriate for teenager, let's say they are in grade six or seven, to continue uh, learning from level five? Yeah, I think so. Uh, as we talked about, the course is very much kind of it gets more mature as yeah, the level. It's more grown up uh, from level five, level, level six. So I think uh, it's still suitable for a uh, teenager uh, in grade six and grade seven. Yeah, and um, there's quite a lot of reading content, I would say, in yeah. the upper levels as well, which I think is still quite appropriate uh, for teens. Mm -hmm. so. And any questions? So I'll stay on uh, for any questions while we wait for uh, Guan Li to join, because okay. he has a, he's doing another presentation right now, so I think he's going to join right after. 
finishes that, but we can take maybe a... Uh, well, I, I just want to ask, like, uh, BT for young learners, uh, is it like the same with the Cambridge uh, assessment? Um, how do we apply it here in our situation, our uh, education situation? Because I think, like, Cambridge assessment are really popular, right? Yeah, the Cambridge assessment, well, good kids have their own assessments as well. We'll see that the Pearson uh, ones are quite good uh, as well. But uh, I know Cambridge. Uh, they're the very dominant in terms of uh, how schools accept their certificate. And I mean, it's like how PT is almost a Pearson designed test. I really like it. And the way they do it with PT academic. Um, but it, uh, but because the assessment are not so popular here, so it's like it's hard to recommend parents to let their children to switch to another exam. Yeah. I think that's why we have both. So uh, if the parents are more familiar with the, the Cambridge exam uh, and that's the brand there, then uh, you can do all the Cambridge practice. Uh, and then uh, if you wanted to switch to the Pearson one, uh, we also have the, the Pearson test prep there uh, mm. as well. So it's kind of unique in that way, I think, is that we have both. <laughs> it's probably the only, I would say it's the only one. Thank you, Kayo, uh, a lot. I am I'm being, uh, having a thing with Guan Li. I think he will be joining shortly. Mm -hmm. So, Kayo, if you if you already finished, and please uh, go with for you know your next meeting. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you, thank Kayo. Thanks, everyone. Uh, I just saw in the chat so there was a question about the value. So I'm gonna quickly I'll quickly answer that question in the chat. And then I'll leave you.
Thank you. Have a nice day. Energetic, so we don't need bright. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, let me just let me just uh, quickly uh, introduce you. So and uh, uh, hi teachers, hi hi, and then, then we are coming to a uh, section which is about AI assessment, uh, automation, is a information uh, assessment by Pearson, okay. and we are uh, presenting uh, about our new English primary assessment. English page map your mm. learners to uh, our VMA center and Guan Li, my colleague, is the assessment director for uh, Asia and he will help us understand about how the product, how the assessment is run at the center and hopefully this is informative to you. Over to you, Guan Li. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, first, first thing I want to check with you, uh, Tony, have you already provided some guidance on the or I just need to go into the system. I think I I show them the uh, the key information and also the the, the trial code for six level. But All since right. today we have a broader range of features for the center, so it would be great if you can you know address it again. Okay, no problem. All right, I will need to open up. Uh, share you the files uh, bed for this uh, session. Let me open up my files. Okay, I will show you. Okay, let me know that you can see my screen right now. Okay, yes, sure. Very clear. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi, hello. Yes, 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 I can see you. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I, I, I mute my microphone. Okay, I, I say something, but then yeah, you didn't seem you didn't hear yeah. it. But it's really clear. Can, can start right away. All right, yeah, please. I was uh, I will spend like uh, this uh, next uh, probably forty five minutes for the next uh, this uh, this session to to share with you two information. One is quick review of the product for English benchmark young learner test, which is the digital assessment to assess students from six to thirty years old. And the second half of this uh, session, I will share with you the teacher portal, which is a platform uh, that uh, every teacher will need to know how to use and assign the test to the children uh, before and also how to use the reports. All right. So, like without further ado, let me look at the uh, information about this bench from young learners. All right. This is actually. Uh, Connection with uh, the, uh, what Kaiyu may have covered already. Uh, we hope that the arrangement of this uh, English digital solution come together with the courseware, and then uh, we want to access uh, more from the courseware learning and provide the tools to every teacher to understand the background of. Of the students are uh, you 
using the score scale of GSD from 10 to 19. So we understand where they are. So the English benchmark young on the test is actually playing two different roles. Number one is to know what is the background of the test.
is a laptop mass deal with no less PC or laptop that would be to download free additional software or emulate the software provided by ESM. Alright, so the rest of the uh, settings are similar. We just only need to add uh, tablets uh, in the OS uh, one preferred method of delivery test. And of course, PC and laptop is the second of approach that we can do it. And of course, uh, when you have that started, uh, we can guide you further in how to do it uh, in terms of the tablet. So as I say, there are six levels altogether, level one to level six. And you can see from here, I'll give you a, a summary. Uh, each of the tests actually has five tests, which means to say that we have five big spots already been developed, five different set of question levels has already been developed by each level. So every level we have five different set of question levels. In other words, uh, every student they want to do it to monitor the test, monitor the performance. They can take one test, second time, three time. They can evaluate whether in level one and the any progression along the way from 10, whether they grow to 27 maximum. And then the recommendation is to ask them to go for the second level, the level, fourth level, accordingly. So we have five different set of questions better to or that the, the request from the student if they need to take more than one time in a year or a long year semester. So the five tests will, will be randomly provided and uh, provided by the system so that it will not be repeated uh, for the same candidate or test that, the, that they will take the same test in a year. So there are five different tests. So as I said, the, the, the duration is quite short from here. And 36 minutes to determine the higher level. Right. Uh, okay, be, uh, why would you uh, use the. Before moving line? to this slide, can, can I ask for a little bit about yes. uh, yeah, I mean if, if we want to use it as a placement test? Um, for example, I want students working and they are not able to know their level yet. So, would they be sitting in the, uh, the level one test? Um, the system will automatically adjust them to a different test, or do we have to do it manually? Yeah, good question. Yeah, if one l is not an adaptive test, then mm. uh, they can come in any time. They determine you have to determine you have to one which level they go. Uh. Right. So, so you then say once they really come in, then they want to know which level. Um, the few things that we need to be able to one thing is their prior knowledge in English. What we try to understand here is whether uh, this is coming from an English spoken family, uh, whether they have learned any English test before, uh, how long the learning English in, uh, in advance, you know, like we say that 120 hours study per level or higher level, higher. We have the guidance document as well to guide them, you know, which level to go. In the absence of any factors like that, we always prefer them to start from level one. Okay. All right, unless you are able to tell that uh, previously they go for five years English learning, uh, then uh, then will be a question about whether you want to let them okay. higher level. So as I said, it is not an adaptive test uh, for children. It's rather that you select that, uh, let the system adjust themselves soon the level of uh, English competency. We do have those adaptive tests for the higher learners. Mm -hmm. Higher means that the age group of about 14 years old and it makes sense for us to have that adaptive test in place, which we call it different product, we call it level test, which is adaptive test. And that makes sense for you. Yes, to yes, sure. Use the level test mm -hmm. But but but, but oh, I, yeah. I wish that's why 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 didn't they do this one like adaptive like the the older, um, the teenager test. Yeah. Because it's hard for us to, they are young learners and it's hard to tell whether, even though they say that I have studied English for two years, it is hard for me to uh, to sit them in uh, level two or maybe level three. Okay, it's kind of uh, wondrous for us to. Yeah, yeah. So, so obviously, it's 
one would depend on the judgment of the business of the student. Mm. And then from the prior learning uh, experience from the student, then you decide whether level 3 is suitable or level 4. Is okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's no way that we can uh, judge uh, by having the system to, 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 to adjust itself to meet the student's uh, background. All right. Okay, okay, thanks. So, so go back to the uh, why choose. Uh, of course, there is a lot of these uh, good points that we mentioned apart from the four benefits that we explained about it. Uh, I also touched on some uh, uh, good points related to the uh, design of the test. We will involve uh, some gamification technology as well, and then so that uh, with two D structure where we design the course using three D scale, and that will give some flexible. Test is suitable for the class based or group based, and it's actually a formative test. 